What's going on guys? Chris Barricat here in the Human Performance Lab. With my man Josh, my man Andrew, Tori's here as well helping out. We are here for baseline data collection for my contest prep, which we also want to turn into a case study. So um, today we're doing a bunch of assessments to basically see where I'm currently at, get a bunch of baseline data so we can track how things are changing over time. So first things first, we start off with the DEXA scan to assess my body composition. But we're doing three different body composition assessments today. We're utilizing the DEXA. We're also utilizing this tool called the Impedimed, um, which gives you your total body water. And then later on, my man, Dr. Joe Walters is coming in and he's gonna do a seven site skin caliper assessment as well. Um, to determine body composition with three different tools. There's always going to be some variance between each tool, so it's nice to have different assessments. Essentially, what I would predict is right now, at the beginning of my contest prep, um, my resting metabolic rate is probably going to be slightly above the predicted value when you utilize a lot of these different formulas. Um, and then as I contest prep and lose body weight, your metabolism also kind of down regulates and adapts a bit, so I wouldn't be surprised that at the end of my prep, my metabolic rate is actually lower than the predicted value um, due to some metabolic changes and hormonal changes that occur. Um, and then yesterday, I actually got blood work done too, to kind of assess um, where my current hormonal levels are at, as well as some of my vitamin and mineral levels, a lot of different data there. And we're gonna track that over time to see how that changes as body fat decreases and as you prepare for a competition. So stay tuned, I hope you guys enjoy the content and learn a lot from it. And I will kind of keep you in after each assessment and let you know what's going on. up with two different assessments, the DEXA scan over here, as well as something called the impediment. Um, so two different tools, and they are giving us different values. For example, here in the DEXA, I came out to 14.0% body fat in total. Um, and on the other tool, the impediment, I came out at 11.38%. So there is quite some difference there. Um, but the cool thing is it gives me a good idea of what my predicted stage weight may be. Um, and again, we will assess how my body composition improves over time. All right. Um, I also just want to show you a little bit more detail of what the DEXA provides. This right here is looking at bone mineral density. Um, I'm basically right at the mean, which is a little bit strange. Uh, most people that resistance train as regularly as I do, you would expect their bone mineral density to be above the mean. So this black line right here is the mean. This is two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above. Uh, however, I would say if I weren't resistance training, I guarantee you just from a genetic standpoint, I probably would have lower bone mineral density than average. Um, and then it also shows you how your current body composition uh, compares to your peers. And I think this is actually a pretty important thing to discuss because body dysmorphia, body image, um, issues are really prevalent in the bodybuilding space. So right now, before I start dieting, this is like the quote unquote fattest I ever get. Um, I'm still about, I'm still leaner than about 95% of the entire population. So bodybuilders have a really skewed perception of what lean actually is because they are always striving to get this shredded stage look. Um, so this puts everything into perspective. You know, that my man, Dr. Joel Walters, just walked in and he's going to do a seven site skin caliper assessment as well. So rather than having just the DEXA and the Epitamed, we have an additional body composition assessment as well. And we'll see how they all kind of vary. Two with 
with the seven site uh, skin caliper assessment and that gave me different readings than both the DEXA and the bioelectrical impedance machine that impediment. So to give you guys an idea, the skin calipers actually put me at the highest body fat. It gave me 16.6% body fat, whereas the DEXA put me at 14 and then the impediment put me at 11.4. So using those numbers, you'll see that um, my total lean mass is predicted to be about 152 pounds and my total fat mass is 30 pounds. So again, if I were to get to 0% body fat, I would be around 152, according to the seven site skin calipers. Um, so it's just really interesting to see this data. Everything is slightly different. Like I said before, I think the truth could probably fall somewhere in the middle um, in between all three of these assessments. So the seven site, again, put me at 152 pounds of lean mass. The DEXA put me at 154, and then the impediment put me at 162. So that is quite a big difference, especially if you compare the furthest ones on the outside, um, the either 152 pounds of lean mass compared to 162 pounds of lean mass. That's a 10 pound difference. So um, again, obviously none of these assessments are perfect, but it's cool to have different pieces of data uh, and give yourself a better idea of where you're going to end up, right? So, um, yeah, I hope you found this useful. Again, a lot of people don't have access to a DEXA scan or to an impediment, but the seven site is really, really cheap to do. Basically, anybody can do it as long as you practice and you actually improve that skill over time. It's a really great way to assess body composition because it's actually measuring subcutaneous body fat. That's directly what you're pinching and grabbing. So you know as you're getting leaner and leaner, that subcutaneous body fat is decreasing, those skin fold measurements are decreasing. So it's an amazing tool to track progress over time or, or rate of change, whether you're gaining weight and bulking or you're in a fat loss phase and cutting. It's a really, really good tool. And again, it's super cheap, cost effective, and anybody can do it. So um, if you're not tracking body composition and you're only using your scale weight as the primary objective measurement, you're missing out on a lot of data. So I highly recommend using some sort of body conscious assessment. besides skeletal muscles. So skeletal muscle is only one component of total lean body tissue. Um, so utilizing the ultrasonography, we're able to assess the actual muscle thickness. So what we did today was we looked at the quadriceps, we looked at the pec, we looked at the bicep and the tricep. If you take a quick peek here at the screen, we kind of go over what the tricep assessment looks like. Um, right here, you have the humerus, this slightly gray, curved line is the humerus of the upper arm. And then over here is the skin layer. And then from here to here is subcutaneous fat. So everything in between is skeletal muscle tissue. To be more specific, this right here is the long head of the tricep. This right here is the lateral head of the tricep. So what we did, is just measured the total thickness of the elbow extensors. So Josh dropped the pin from the humerus all the way up to where the subcutaneous fat is about to start, where the muscle tissue ends. So we get multiple measurements on these different tissues. We did the same thing for the quad, 
same thing for the pec, same thing for the bicep and tricep. So it's a really good assessment. Yeah, we're gonna see how this changes over time. We're not gonna collect any data until the midpoint of prep. So that's gonna be when I'm approximately 10 weeks out. So 10 weeks from now, we'll come back in here and kind of redo everything. Um, I'm gonna quickly show you guys what my physique is currently looking like when posing, going through mandatories, going through some quarter turns and stuff like that. And then again, 10 weeks from now, we'll compare and contrast and see how things are changing. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Again, these are just a bunch of tools in the toolbox and we're kind of utilizing as many as possible, um, as appropriately as possible, so we can collect data and kind of track how things are changing. Hope you guys enjoyed, hope you guys learned something, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.